Here's my bearing cap, and the seal in the kit wasn't anywhere near what I needed. What I came up with was a SKF 13534. Um, so we're going to go ahead and drive that in, and I'm not going to worry about putting any R silicone or RTV on the outside of this because, again, this is going to be the only seal in this bearing housing. Uh, the grease will be able to flow at the back side of it freely. When you're done, uh, flip it over and make sure that you get that seal fully seated. Here is my shaft. You can see I have the snap ring back on there. And I wanted to say a few quick words about this uh, area that the rope seal is right on. I could have had this turned down with a lathe, but I'm not really worried about it because I'm going to be looking for a newer pump to put in this boat. So I'm just going to run it the way it is and we'll see how bad it leaks, if at all. And again, in this JEA pump, there is no rear seal in this bearing housing. The shaft's ready. I'm going to go ahead and stick it in there. Do a couple light taps to it. Now I'm going to put a little grease around where it seal rides. This is marine grease. You can see I've packed the inside of the lip with uh, grease. I'm going to install the gasket. I'm not going to bother putting any sealant on it because the grease will just flow right out the back of this thing. And the bearing cap cover. I'm going to put the grease circ towards the top. The manual says to install Loctite on the four bolts that hold that in there. But again, it's aluminum threads, so I'm going to go with uh, anti-seize. And then you torque them down in three increments in a pattern to 30 foot-pounds. Since the last video, I found an interesting article on Rex Marine about the clearance from the wear ring to this uh, impeller collar. And they're saying um, you don't want to run it any tighter than 25,000 total clearance. So it's 12,500 clearance per side. At this point in the build, I was kind of freaking out. If you look at this, looks like there's a bunch of runout on that shaft. It's going left to right in the back here. I actually put a dial indicator on it, it came up with 80 thousandths. And kind of freaked out when I took it to the machine shop, had them check it. The shaft itself is straight, so I don't know if there's runout on the bearing or if that bearing's on there a little bit crooked. Um, you can see there is some play in the bearing. I had him chuck up the front bearing in a lathe, and there was still a run out. When he put the back center on it, it was held to within five thousandths. So I think it's going to be okay with the bowl. Here I got the back bowl temporarily on the lithium power. And looking in the hand bowl, you can see that virtually all that run out is eliminated when the, the back of the shaft is supported by the bushings. So I think I'm going to be all right here. They also said you want about twenty-five thousandths forward clearance between the impeller and the wear ring. Um, this is checked through the hand hole. Unfortunately, I don't have a shoulder on the wear ring, so it's not going to be easy to measure. The distance between this collar and the wear ring is about the same, so to get a crude measurement, I'm just going to measure through the hand hole between the impeller and my liner. Now I'm going to throw this impeller on here, and the first thing I'm going to do there is I'm going to put that shim pack in there that was on it originally. And I put a bunch of anti seize on this in the keyway, all around the shaft, and on the lock nut threads when I get that far. Put the power on right away first. season these threads now and then I'm going to snug this nut up torque on this nut is supposed to be 80 foot pounds I'm just going to snug it up for now I'm doing my checking and 
through the hand hole, I'm gonna take a feeler gauge and make sure I have at least 25 thousandths clearance here. What I'm doing here is a really crude measurement because there is no shoulder on that wear ring, and I'm just measuring between the impeller and the liner. Here's the back of it, and you can see that there's a similar mode of clearance between that shoulder on the impeller and the uh, wear ring. Now I have the impeller lock nut cranked down to about 80 foot pounds, and I don't really have a torque wrench that would work on that. A couple of words with that is what actually turns the impeller is the key on the shaft, not the nut and the rotation of the engine tends to keep the nut tight so don't get too carried away with uh, tightening that nut. I'm going to install this bowl now and a note on that is this big ring is supposed to fit in this groove around the edge of the bowl. Well, you're actually supposed to put your transom adapter on after the pump is installed. It would make the, putting that o-ring in a lot easier so I'm going to cheat and I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to run a bead of silicone on the inside here and on the gasket all the way around. And then once the bowl's installed, I'll put some silicone around the outside edge. That's how it was when I took it apart and it was fine, so I'm sure it'll be fine again. There is a torque sequence on these bolts when you crank them down. And I labeled it around the perimeter here for you. And you're going to want to crank those bolts down to 50 foot-pounds in three increments. And for my bolt, I'm running a stainless bolt. I'm going to be putting anti-seize on the work portion and then silicone RTV are on the top for an added measure of sealing. And just before I put the bowl on, I'm going to put some marine grease around the, uh, the bushing area and where the seal rides. And there's my grease, here's the RTV, I squished it all into that gap. Once your bowl's all torqued down, make sure that everything spins, there's no metal to metal contact. And then you can go ahead and put your rope seals in there. I'm going to go ahead and work these uh, packing rings now with the packing ring follower. I was calling them rope seals earlier. And as I do it, I'm going to stagger the ends. And I'm going to stuff them in with the... Uh, I'll be working them in with the follower. And there I have my packing ring follower uh, installed and just brought it up snug. Probably actually backed it off and I break this new motor in and then uh, snug it up just before I take it to the lake. And I'm going to go ahead and put anti-seas on the end of that shaft when I slide that yoke on. Other than that, um, this is going to be a wrap on this video series. But stay tuned for the action shots of the boat at the lake.